Our ocean and the frozen parts of our planet, our cryosphere, may seem far away, but they shape the way we live and help to sustain life everywhere, providing food and water and are key components of the global climate system. The ability of the world's ocean and cryosphere to provide these services is diminishing as they have been taking the heat for climate change for decades. From polar regions to the highest mountains and all the way down to the depths of the ocean, we are seeing the impact of climate change on plants and wildlife, landscapes and oceans, as well as on our health and well-being, our culture and identity, our industries, our energy and transport systems, our cities and infrastructure. In our Arctic region, sea ice is decreasing. Ground that has been frozen for thousands of years, called permafrost, is also warming and thawing, causing buildings and infrastructure to collapse and coastlines to change or erode. Widespread permafrost thaw is expected by the turn of the century. Permafrost is very vulnerable to warming. Also, contained within this permafrost is a vast amount of carbon. The amount of carbon that's stored in permafrost is basically about double of that uh, contained in the atmosphere at present. In high mountain regions, the melting of glaciers and the thawing of ice and permafrost are increasing hazards such as landslides, avalanches, rock falls and floods, while also affecting cultural heritage, recreational activities and tourism. As high mountain glaciers retreat, they are affecting the availability and quality of water, not only for high mountain communities, but for agriculture, hydropower and cities downstream that are home to millions of people. When glaciers melt, they release water that is stored in the glacier. And that means first when the melt occurs, there's more water because of the melt. But as the glaciers retreat and shrink, there's actually less water available for agriculture, for hydropower and so on. Uh, about uh, one third of the Himalayan glaciers, for example, will be melting by end of the century. Further significant changes can be seen in our vast ocean. Melting glaciers and ice sheets, together with the expansion of a warmer ocean, are causing sea levels to rise. And the speed at which sea level is rising is accelerating with our global sea level rising twice as fast as it did during the 20th century. In low-lying coastal megacities and on small islands, sea level rise is increasing the frequency of extreme sea level events during high tides and intense storms. On small islands, the impact of sea level rise can be severe. Well, you have, first of all, some erosion and the loss of land, and those small island states do not have that much land to start with. You also have the problem of the contamination of the land with salt, and on the water that is stored under that land, if it is contaminated by salt, you cannot drink it anymore. And if your soil is contaminated by salt, you cannot grow the crops and the vegetables, so you have food supply and health issues. Those are the, the major challenges. Over the past few decades, our ocean has absorbed more than 90% of the excess heat in the climate system and taken up between 20 and 30% of human-induced carbon dioxide emissions. Ocean warming has reduced the supply of oxygen and nutrients to marine life, while increasing CO2 levels cause ocean acidification. This uh, decreases the ability of calcifying organisms to build shells and skeletons. These changes have affected the distribution and abundance of marine life in coastal areas and in the open ocean. Across the world, we are already starting to respond and adapt to changes in our ocean and cryosphere. One of the uh, most immediate things that we can do is to reduce other non-climatic impacts on marine ecosystems and the oceans, overfishing, habitat destructions, pollution, 
can exacerbate the impacts of climate change. Climate change are very local specific and uh, communities uh, across the world are using their own knowledge to adapt to climate change. But adapting to a changing environment is not enough. To address unprecedented and long-term changes in the ocean and cryosphere and safeguard our livelihoods and communities, we need to protect and restore our ecosystems and carefully manage our use of natural resources. We can do this by engaging with local communities and indigenous peoples and improving governance systems, while at the same time taking urgent steps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. There may already in some places changes that we may not be adapt to, because these changes are irreversible. But we still have a chance to make a difference. The way these systems operate, there's only one way to protect them and to minimize changes, uh, limit the changes that are developing, and that is by steep reductions in emissions and reaching net zero emissions by mid-century. We're seeing the ocean and the cryosphere changing already and how quickly they continue to change will depend on how rapidly we take action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. I'm optimistic because I've seen the way that these issues are starting to gain more and more traction. I think it's really important to keep the faces of folks who are vulnerable to these changes in mind as we consider actions that we all can take for the future. Working together, we can protect our ocean and cryosphere and secure our future.